All right, welcome back. This is going to be a recap for uh, Friday, July 21st, 2023. Do a real quick recap here. Uh, traded indices, also traded a little bit of the uh, the U.S. yen uh, on Friday. Uh, not a really good day on the indices. Um, starting off with a buy on the mini Dow. Mini Dow is definitely not one of my favorites of all the indices. Um, probably the mini Dow is my least favorite. I don't know why that is, um, but it tends to. It doesn't seem to have the winning streaks. Uh, like I can see, like in the Russell or the mini NASDAQ or even the uh, uh, S&P, the E-mini S&P. But nonetheless, ended up buying on the HF1 buy. Pretty much bought it on the high of that move up. It did start to fall down. It came down and uh, it finally hit my exit of which at what point I went ahead and I got out. I did not take a reversal on this. Um, but we did actually have a bounce. Now, once we had that bounce up and I got another short, now this was a pairing pattern short. I did take the pairing pattern short because I was starting to see weakness in the other indices. And so once again, I'm a big believer in looking for those correlations, right? A lot of times, whether it be a stock or an indice, um, there are commodities that have positive negative correlations and that gives us a pretty good idea of what a particular uh, indice or stock may do based on its um, correlated pairs or even uncorrelated pairs right so anyway I took this short uh, it was a pairing pattern short it did finally break and come down but I actually didn't get out until the very end of the day it finally hit that profit target down here so I ended up getting out. Uh, I would have done extremely well on this trade had I added more. The problem was I didn't add enough size on it. And I th took a little bit too much going into the buy. And so the net and net on this particular trade was a loss. Um, not so with the mini NASDAQ. Let's look at that uh, mini NASDAQ trade. And so before we get started here on the mini NASDAQ, don't forget to subscribe and also hit that like button. That also helps out my uh, my channel here. And also, if you want to be notified on these um, daily recaps, if you hit that notification bell, it will keep you updated on any of the new released videos. Okay, so uh, let's go back here. In the morning, short came in around uh, 10 something, 10.06, 10.07. Um, uh, can't remember which one this one. This may have been an HF1 short. I didn't put, if I don't write it down, I'm going to forget it. So anyway, uh, but I think it may have been an HF1 short. Anyway, it, I wasn't in this trade very long here. Maybe what, 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes. Finally did hit my profit dark target here. Ended up making money. I did not take any additional trades, um, during the day. And I, like I said, on Fridays, I really don't want to go too far into the morning and keep trading. Um, because the volatility really starts to dry up. Got to be careful on Fridays. Most of your action, if any, is going to be first thing in the morning. Uh, we do have some days where it's moving all day long, but that's usually kind of rare, all right? So you want to get in and get out and not continue to over-trade as the market just gets thinner and thinner. As people, you know, just give, uh, they go ahead and they stop their trading as they go into the weekend. So anyway... Uh, so I made a little bit of money on uh, the mini NASDAQ. We'll look at the overall results here, but first let's look at our stock trades and then we can look at everything and see how we did for the uh, for the total day. All right, so we'll look at the first trade of the day here, which was FRTX. FRTX, kind of a disappointment. Now, I did have some targets up here. I did hit some of these targets, but it was so late into the day. I was going to carry it that long. I did have an entry buy, never really hit any kind of reversal points down here, but I did have an entry buy here. And I was in this trade for quite a while, and it just wasn't going anywhere, so I went ahead and got out. I did take a, a loss on that first trade, but uh, the best trade of the day was on GFAI. GFAI, of course, being an AI stock, was really hot. I did pretty well on that. Um, so let's look at GFAI. Now, once again, remember, all these are based on Four different patterns. They're very simple patterns. They just look for the patterns to set up by short. And then uh, assuming the stock has enough volume and enough um, overall interest in it. And I can see some buying coming in on, um, on you can use level two. It doesn't matter. You can use book map. 
Um, you can also use volume, volume if you want to look at it that way. You can look at volume too. But um, you see that um, these stocks that have a lot of interest in the morning. And then the next thing is just enter, and then you um, – I have several lever, uh, levels that I can get out of. These are all based on an Einstein formula, something that was de developed back in the 80s. It's not something that's publicly available, but the hit rate on them are really high, high percentages. And so then I just wait to go for these targets. If I hit the very first target, uh, and there seems to be a lot of con uh, interest still at buying at the first target, I'll see if I can't go for the second, and same on up to the third. All right, so that's kind of how that works. But in this case, it didn't really go anywhere. It just kind of went flat, took a loss. Okay, so let's look at GFAI. All right, so that's kind of interesting what happened on GFAI. So I bought in, initial buy came in on GFAI. About 925, 930, something like that. Uh, so I went, went ahead, bought in, uh, entry buy, hit the opening. After the opening bell, once again, I love to see these start to take off after the opening bell. I did have several um, profit targets sitting up here. did go through the first and second profit target pretty quickly on its way up to the third. Never quite got there. I really thought it was going to go, and then I just flushed. So what I ended up doing is I ended up exiting here on the flush down. All right, so made a little bit of money there, not much. And then what ended up happening is we ended up getting another buy signal right down here, almost to the almost to the low. So I went ahead and I bought in here, got a real good entry. It started coming back up. Once it went through this first entry, it exited. Uh, I'm sorry, I went ahead and I added to my buy on this move up here. After it went back through those two first uh, targets, I added to my buy right here. So start the position here. Added right up here when it hit that. And then I held this trade and I finally got out. Got out early, but I did get out. And it was around 10, I think it was closer to like 10, 10, 10, 11, something like that. Hit my profit target and that was it. I was done for the day. So anyway, that was my best trade I made all day in GFAI. So how did I do overall? Because I had quite a few on the board. Um, so let's take a look here. So as you can see, starting off uh, with the indices, lost on the mini down. Nice little uh, hit on the mini down, but uh, made some of it back on the mini NASDAQ. Then I had a really nice little trade on the mini Russell, but then I started giving it back again on the yen. So the net net is I still ended up losing $117. This trade on the yen came in around, I think it was like 1, 2 o'clock. No, it had to be earlier. It had to be around 12, 31 o'clock uh, Eastern time. And so it just wasn't going anywhere. So I uh, ended up taking a loss on the U.S. yen. Um, and then once again on the stocks, as you can see, GFAI was my best trade. Starting off uh, with that, uh, what was it here? Uh, that FRTX, yeah, just a small little less on loss loss on FRTX. Uh, Retro came in later in the day, didn't do much on um, RETO, but I, uh, I had a nice little trade on BIRI, and of course my favorite JDST. Now JDST, I entered in, I think it was somewhere around 10 a.m. and I held that almost to the end of the day uh it was up higher but i didn't want to carry it through the weekend so i got out of uh, jdst uh and you can see all these other ones some of these came in late in the day nvds i think nvds or uvix came in late in the day but anyway uh, i did quite a bit of trading on on friday uh really didn't expect to do that much i don't like to do too much trading on friday but it seemed things were moving i mean a lot of scalping opportunities. Um, charts look good. Um, a lot of these had multiple Einstein targets. Once again, when I'm looking at a stock, I want to see more than one of these Einstein targets. Okay, and so that's something that uh, that the software does for me. And if you do want to learn how to do it yourself, we can. Uh, if you buy one of the packages, we'll show you how to get all this set up here. But in this case, um, I like to see clustering, number one, but I also like to see multiple uh, uh, levels coming in. So typically what I happen is we'll get two or three, and then as we start to move throughout the day, 
we can get some additional patterns that continue to confirm the up move. And that's really what I like to see. And we saw a little bit of that on GFAI. Okay. And once I got out of this trade, I didn't continue to track any sevens because once again, I mean, it's a Friday going into the end of the day. Had it been an early, had it been a, a day like a Monday or Tuesday, even in the middle of the week, I would have watched it a little bit further, see if we had some more uh, setups on the patterns. But uh, that was pretty much uh, it for me. Small winning day overall, helped out by the stocks, um, and just not a very good day on the indice. So uh, besides uh, my favorites, which is going to be the mini Russell and the mini NASDAQ, always my favorites. But like I said, I find the, the mini Dow to be tough pre uh, sometimes. The mini Dow can be tough. Um, the other thing that can be tough for me is crude oil. I don't know. Natural gas is always good. Uh, gold is always good. Silver is kind of a slow mover. Uh, those are kind of the main ones that I like to, to day trade. Um, let's see what else. I don't think there's anything else. I mean, those are going to be my, the main ones. Oh, the E-mini S&P, of course. Yeah, I like the E-mini S&P, but you know what? I really like trading the uh, mini NASDAQ. And the Russell more so than the uh, E-mini S&P, only because the E-mini S&P, a lot of times, uh, I have to hold on to it longer. It tends to be a little bit slower. It's still a good setup. It just tends to take longer for it to hit its targets than something like the mini uh, Russell, mini NASDAQ. Okay, so if you'd like to follow me live, once again, every morning, first 30 minutes, you can watch me live on YouTube. If you want to continue on and have access to not only my watch list, but also access to these levels and watch me actually trade where I'm getting in, where I'm getting out, which ones I'm looking at on my watch list, then um, you can do that by subscribing to our Discord channel. It's only $50 a month. You get access to all of that. Also, we also have some other goodies. We'll put out some overnight trades for you that you can go ahead and watch if you'd like to put trades on and uh, carry them overnight into the next day. Certainly not one of my favorites. I like to be more of a, a scalper, but it's it's there if that's something that you like. So anyway, that's going to be it. Um, everybody have an enjoyable weekend and uh, be back first thing Monday morning. Don't forget we do this every Monday through Friday. I do trade 30 minutes live and uh, I trade from uh, 9 to 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. And then at that point, I switch over into our live Discord channel. Okay. Y'all take care. See you next week.